got to get their hearts in the right place. God, this morning as we've all come together to pray, I pray that your spirit would be on these individuals this morning. I pray this morning, dear God, Lord, that your power would be overflowing in this room, dear Jesus, dear God, Lord. God, Lord, that you would lift up teachers. God, if you got your Bibles today, if you got your Bibles today, I want you to turn over the book of Mark. That's all I'm going to give you for right now. We're just going to start going in that direction. Sammy, Sammy challenged us last week. Uh, I have a lot of fun. I've got a few minutes, so I'm gonna, it'll take me a minute to, to get to where I'm going. So y'all are just going to have to be patient with me today because uh, we, we had a good time this week. A, a couple weeks ago, I, I, to say that I have a, a, a brother in Christ and, 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 my, and, and Sammy Clark, to say that, that I have somebody that's, that's here to help me and me and him together are, are, are trying to do what God calls us to do is, is just an understatement. He is, he, he is constantly right there, me and him together, lifting each other up through whatever, prayer, whatever means we can. But we text each other a lot, and we have a good time. And I, I like to joke and kid. And, 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 and several weeks ago, Sammy texted me and said, Hey, Joey, he sent me some stuff about the rapture. And I was like, Man, that, that would really be great because I've got something I want to preach on in February if you'll preach that. So last Sunday when we came in here, Steve, I mean, I, I came in here preparing my heart, mind, and soul to be a message about the rapture. And, and the whole time, Beverly, as I sit there, I'm like, at some point, Sammy's going to get to this. You know what I'm saying? He's going to get to the rapture. And he, and he, he threw me an absolute curveball. And threw out the whole verse thing, you know, and, and he got me. He did, Matt. He got me. Made me think, you know, and I'm like, we're going to go in a different direction. But, but what, he, what he threw out there and what he's trying to do, I think is a good thing. I, I, have, I have favorite verses in the Bible. How many of you have a, a favorite? I have a favorite verse. I have a favorite verse. Now, what, what Sammy is saying, he is not asking you to go find your favorite verse in the Bible. That's, that's not what he's saying. I have several favorite verses, and I, I have a tough time with that, Matt, because there are so many Verses that I like. What, what he was saying is challenge yourself with something. And, I, and, I, and I, I'm going I'm to give you an example. Steve works with me, so you know what I'm about to say is true because you've seen it sitting there. There's a verse that is on one of my printers in my office. It sits right beside my desk, and it is, it's the prayer of Jabez. And I, and I put it there years ago, and I, and, I, and, I, and I look at it very often, and it's a very simple prayer. And it's something that, that, that I unique, uniquely I like to say that I live my life, by, but, I, but I paid attention to it in all my years. And it says, you know, very simply that Jabez went to God. He asked him, God, to extend my coast, to keep me from evil. He asked him for several things in this verse. And what is so cool about it at the end, at the very end of the verse, Joey, you know what it says? And God did as he requested. And I know, and so, so for a large, for, for maybe 10, 15 years of my life, I have that verse sitting there next to me because I acknowledge God through that verse that, that when, I, when I pray to him. Now that's not my verse today. That's not what we're going to talk about today. But I'm giving you an example that sometimes you can find a verse in your life that can help, you know, challenge you. you know, and, and that verse challenged me to say, you know what, I can ask God. Y- y'all listen to this. I can ask God for things. Okay? I can ask God for things. You know what? You know what's really cool about it? And God would hear that request. So that was a neat challenge to me years ago, and I've kept it there. And so last Sunday, as, as Sammy, Sammy came in here and, and he preached his message, how many of you remember Psalms 119? Blah, 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 blah. Did y'all mark it? Nobody cared about Sammy's verse? <laughs> Mark, you cared about it? Sammy's verse was 119, Psalms 119, 112. I have inclined in my heart to perform the statute, thy statutes always, even unto the end. And I thought, that is a challenging verse, is it not? So, so this week, as the week went on, Sammy would text me and say, did you come up with a verse? And I'd say, yeah, I got one. I got a verse. And, then, and Sammy would say, well, what is it? I said, well, Sammy, one night I sent him a text. I said, man, I really want to tell you what my verse is. But I'm afraid, Deke, if I give it to you, if I tell you what my verse is, you won't be able to sleep tonight. I'll be honest with you, Jimmy. I didn't want to do that to him. You think that was a Christian thing to do, wasn't it, Toby? Like, man, if I, if I got something, if I gave it to Brother Sammy, and it kept him up all night, Steve, I mean, that wasn't, he went to work the next day. I mean, he's up there building airplanes and stuff at Lockheed. Some jokers would have fell out of the sky. I, I can't have that. I didn't want to make Sammy nervous. 
You know, I was like, man, he'd be thinking on that. He'd be trying to, man, I can't digest all that. Seriously, JoJo, what's your verse? And so I thought I'd have some more fun with Sammy. He was really intrigued. I thought he would find it at some point. I said, Sammy, I'm trying to find a verse that would challenge me. You know, I'm trying to find a verse that when I'm down, it might lift me up. Wouldn't that be kind of a cool verse, Landon, if you think about like, like the verse that, that you're looking for in the Bible, that, that maybe you have a bad day. You don't understand what I'm saying. Maybe you have a bad day. Maybe somebody says something to you, Jimmy, out of your way, and you go look at that verse and say, eh, I ain't going to pay attention to this other stuff. So, so, so maybe I want a verse out of the Bible that lifts me up when I'm down. A verse that you know, will, it will lift me up. But also better than that, Matt, I want something that's going to make me think. You understand what I'm saying? So when, when, when I had that verse on my desk about Jabez, Steve, and I, I've had that there for years, it makes me think. It makes me think. It makes me think about God. I want something that is going to de- make me think about God. Y'all, we're doing a lot more with this verse than we thought we were, right? <laughs> Somebody, Lawrence is like, man, I got to come up with a verse. <laughs> Something that, that, that's going to make me think about God. You know what? And then I went even better than that, Marchy. I said, I want a verse that, that if I passed it on to somebody else, it would inspire others. Wouldn't that be kind of a like, not just a verse that you're going to read and, and think, but you know, when I pass that verse on to somebody else, that it's going to inspire them, Wanda. You know what I'm saying? It's going to, it's like, it's going to have some meaning that it's going to have. I know Wanda's sitting there going, You've been aggravating Sammy with this verse all week. This better be something good. And then better yet, I want a verse that points to Jesus. Think about that. I said, you know what? If I'm going to have some inspiration in my life, Sammy's challenged me. My brother has challenged me to go find a verse in the Bible that, that, that's going to lift me up, that's going to tell others, that's going to make a difference to other people. That, you know what, if it's going to do all those things better than that, Steve, maybe it ought to point to Jesus. You ever thought about that? It ought to have a, have a roadside. Jimmy, Jimmy, talking about points, Jimmy, Jimmy Smith came up with a good idea for me today, talking about point. And he said, if this, this offering thing don't work out, he's going to get me a big neon sign and put, have it flashing pies. <laughs> right here in the box. We may have to try that. We're not there yet, Jimmy. But, we're not. but you know what? When it's pointing right here, you know where to go. You understand what I'm saying? So it's pointing. So I said, maybe I've got to come up with something that it really points to Christ. You know what I'm saying? So, and I, and I'm, I'm not talking about what your verse should be. I'm talking about me now. So I want something in my heart that, that points to Christ. And then I took a break. Took a deep breath. Toby, I took a deep breath. And I started thinking about this past year, if you will. Man, this this past year's been weird, hasn't it? Come on, y'all. Can we all can be honest with that? Do, do, do you know what you could digest from this past year more than anything else? I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I digest from this past year. Negativity. And, I'll, and let me tell you something, a lot of it. I, I, and I'm, I'm going to talk about, I don't want to be negative, I'm just going to talk about what we hear, what we are. We are all consumed in this COVID thing. I don't, I don't you know, what our opinions are. I told Matt, I listened to one of my messages from last May that I preached, and I was interested in my take then and where it is now and, and what have you, you know, just my mindset where it was then and where my mindset is now. And, but I'm going to tell you something. You can't talk, Beverly, to an individual today. You can't talk to somebody in church. You can't, if you're around there more than five minutes, there is going to be some mention about that disease, whether it's how they affected their family. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Whether, whether How it affects them, that they've had it, your, their opinions on masks, their opinions on not wearing I mean, the, you're going to talk about it. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. Uh, how many of y'all besides me are really just tired of talking about it? I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I'm going to say, God... Can you just literally let this move on? We do. And, we, and, then, and, then, and then we get into the, poli- the, the political spectrum. Oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> a 
Lord, help us. We could, we could get there. And it, it's, for some reason, in all of my years of, of, uh, as a Christian, the, the, the hatred, and I mean that, the hatred that people have toward each other. I, I don't, that, that they can just say whatever they want whenever they want to. You know, and this, 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 this mean thing that's called Facebook, where, where you can, 98% of the things that are said on the Internet right now, whether it be a Twitter, whether it be, 98% of those things that are said would never be said face-to-face -face with somebody. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you were standing there with a person that had the other opinion, you, you would never say that to them. But we think because we can just type it out there and put it out there for the world to see, we'll say anything. And the hatred that, that comes out from a political spectrum. Hey, y'all, I get it. Everybody has different views. I've been married to a wonderful lady for 27 years, and we have different views about things in our life. But you know what? That's the best friend I got in this world. And instead of focusing on all that negativity, maybe we should focus on something else. But we do. We, we get on the political spectrum. Man, you know what? We're in the wintertime right now. It's cold. You can't go play golf. I mean, Scott's here. You can't even fish, obviously. <laughs> Sonny must know there's some fishing going on somewhere this guy. <laughs> must, must be somewhere you can fish today. So, yeah, probably so. But you know, you get bad weather. Hey, do, do any of y'all get gloomy in the bad weather? You ever get kind of down? You're just tired? You just, you want to get out of the house? You want to go outside? You want to do something different? You know, we got outside. Matthew and me and Max, yesterday we were burning stuff, and Max goes, how in the world can you ever figure out how to do stupid stuff outside on one of the coldest days? And then we got out there and got a fire going, and I said, and once we got a fire going, Matthew, it wasn't so bad anymore, was it? We got a fire, we started burning some stuff, but cold weather brings on negativity. You just want to get out of the house. You just want to do something. We want to do something different. Seems like we can't do it. Then you get to be honest right here this morning, this morning. How many of you this morning that, because all that's going around that has known somebody that's passed away. How many of y'all know? Put your hands up. I mean, that's, that's all around us right now. You, you understand what I'm saying? That's all around us. So, so when you are talking, when you have a family member and you're talking to them, your focus is, is it is. It just all of a sudden is on, man, death, it surrounds us. And it's, 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 it's very frustrating. So it's tough. It's tough to be positive. Somebody's out of work. Somebody needs a job. It's always, uh, you know, we, we were talking about that. Sometimes I, I, I told Lynn one time, it's funny I have the immunity to this because there are a lot of people out there in America today that aren't working. You know, they, they don't have a job. They don't have resources to take their families. They don't have the resources to go down to pay. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. If you're a mom or a dad and you're experiencing that today, it's, it's, it's kind of tough to say positive when your, your son says, Hey, Mom, I want a new pair of shoes. Hey, or, or even worse than that, Sammy, they say, my pair of shoes has got a hole in it. I need a new pair of shoes. And you don't have the means. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's very frustrating. It is. It's a frustrating time. But Sammy challenges us, and he says, Hey, man, I want you to go find a verse that will get you through the year. <laughs> All that going on, Sammy. I, I got to go find something that, that I got to go dig out of the Bible. And it's, you know what? I, I can't change verses. I got to use that to get me through the year. And so here's what I came up with. Lynn said, that was a long intro. <laughs> they didn't sing in the choir today, baby doll. So let's turn to the book of Mark. Let's turn to chapter 5. Maybe the message won't be as long as the intro. I'm just playing. Mark chapter 5, I want to be in verse 18. I want to read two verses to you real quick. Uh, second part of it is the verse for me, Sammy. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had, had been possessed with the devil prayed unto him, saying that he might be with him. And that, that's a kind of a cool thought, isn't it? Jesus just let Legion go with all those devils and demons that were inside of him. And, 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 and Legion says... Lord, if I could just go be with you. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. I think that's a very, pretty strong request. 
But the master says this, and this is my verse. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and hath had compassion on you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, this morning to God, Lord. We are so grateful. God, we are so thankful for the time that we have to come into your house once again. God, the time to celebrate you. And God, this morning, dear Jesus, dear God, Lord, as we open up your word, and we dig into this word, dear Jesus, dear God, Lord, I pray that you'd open up our hearts, souls, and minds to see what it is that you'd have us to see. God, if there's someone here, God, I'm not talking about through the words that, that Sammy's preached and taught when he preaches or the words that I preach and how I preach and the, the way that I go down it. But I, God, I'm talking about through the moving of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would prick somebody's heart today. God, to allow them to see the importance of Jesus in their life. God, I just pray this morning, God, Lord, that you'd be with us in this moment. Lead us, guys, and direct us as only you can. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. I want to talk about three quick things. I'm going to have fun with them for three quick things. I want to talk about our ministry. I want to talk about our message. And I want to talk about our reason. I want to talk about those three things. That's what my verse for the year is going to bring to me. It's going to tell me my ministry. It's going to tell me my message. And it's going to be tell me the reason that I do what I do. Okay? Is that, is that good? Deep? So that's where I'm going this morning. First of all, I want to talk about my ministry. I want to talk about... As I look into what God has for me this year, I want to get a location as to where my ministry needs to be, Beverly. You know what? That's important. Sometimes we make the horizon, Matthew. We do. We make the horizon. Matthew is, is, is at, at, at Georgia Tech right now, and he's going to school, and he is in a neat uh, fraternity that's called Kasai. He has an individual, Brother Robbie, that is on his heart, that Brother Robbie has dictated that his ministry his ministry is these college kids right now, okay? Do y'all understand that? That is his focal point, and he is at that school. He is at that university. He has determined that that is his ministry for this moment in his life. I want to tell you something. I want you to understand something. As you try to go and do something for Jesus Christ today, this is very important. As you, as you strive, Brother Rick, as you get in your heart and you say, I want to do something for God. I want to go down a path for Jesus Christ, Matt. I want to do what God would have me to do. You have got to focus on where your ministry is at. You do. You've got to figure out that ministry. Brother Matt's here with our kids on Wednesday night. Him and Sister Kim, and there are several others. They have determined a ministry path that is, you know what? You know what they're going to do? You know what, you know what Matt has, has come into his heart, so in mind? He has said, I am all in with these kids. I'm all in with them. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to do whatever it takes that I can to get these kids to Jesus Christ. He's determined his ministry, okay? I'm going to tell you, a lot of us today, and you can raise your hands, you can look at yourself in the mirror, and you can go figure it out for yourself. The reason that you cannot get people to Jesus Christ today, the reason that it's unfathomable because, man, you look at that huge world that's outside of these doors, and you have no earthly idea where to go. I'm going to tell you something. You have to determine where your ministry is at. You've got to figure that out. You've got to pray God and say, God, show me a ministry path. You know what? For me, it's Concord Baptist Church. It is as a minister here. But what Jesus told Legion is, Sammy, he said, go home to that. He gave him a path for his ministry, did he not? He gave him a path for him to be on and said, this is what you need to do. How many of us are tired of being stuck in our houses today? <laughs> I'll tell you, over the last months, there's a lot of people that, that they've been at home. They've been at home with their kids. Lynn, as a teacher, has heard people complain about being at home with her. You know what's funny, Steve? I'm going to tell you what's really funny is that people write an email to Lynn and complain about being at home with their kids during the day. And Lynn says, I got to be with them every day when you're not with them. <laughs> How do you think I like it? <laughs> you ever thought about that? Like, I don't want to be around my kids. You know what? I don't want to be around them either. <laughs> Somebody got to pay me to do it. <laughs> Maybe you ought to raise some better kids. Think about it. 
So Jesus gives Legion a specific ministry path. He says, Legion, I understand that you want to be with me. I understand that you want to go with me. I understand that you want to watch me do the miracles. I understand that you want to see me touch people. I understand that you want to change, see me changing people's lives. But what I need you to do is get your ministry right. I want you to go home. I want you to go home to your friends. Listen to this. I want you to go home to your friends. I want you to let that become your ministry. Do you know what my greatest ministry work is in my life? Do y'all know what it is? Anybody has a clue? If you could say, Rick, what's your greatest ministry, Joey? If somebody asked, I know the answer to this question. Do you know what my greatest ministry, Christy, is in my life? Do you know what it is? It's Maggie, Max, and Matthew. That has been my greatest ministry effort in the 20-something years that each one of them have been allowed to be on this earth. That has been mine and Lynn's greatest ministry effort is to teach them about God, to tell them about Jesus, to teach them to grow in Jesus, to teach them to have faith in Jesus. You know where that exists? I didn't have to go to Uganda, Marchie. I didn't have to go to Guatemala, Deek. You know what I did? I did exactly what Jesus said I could do. Go home. I'm going to tell you something, folks. There's a lot of us today that need to get God's ministry into our homes. We, we, we think it's just for this church. We think it's just for this assembly. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. That ministry needs to be in our homes. Jesus said, identify this legion. I want you to go home. I don't want you to go home to thy friends. You know what? He even told him who to go talk to. Now, how many of y'all are scared to death about talking to strangers? Not you, Beverly, I know. <laughs> Not Beverly. Not Joey. There are some of you that say, Joey, I could never lead a stranger down there in Atlanta. I couldn't do it. I couldn't go down there and talk to that. I couldn't witness to him. I don't have that ability. But you know what, y'all? Listen to this, Brother Dennis. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus didn't tell you to go talk to strangers. He didn't tell Legion to do that, did he? Maybe he knew Legion didn't have that ability. Maybe he understood that that wasn't Legion's personality. Maybe he, he got that Legion wasn't an outgoing person. But you know what he said to Legion? He said, go home and tell your friends. I want you to go talk to your friends. How many of you have friends today? I would have thought it was more. <laughs> maybe, we, maybe we need to do a sermon on friendship, Matt. How many of y'all have friends? I'll keep them up. Here we go. Keep up. Got friends. How many of you got friends that don't know Jesus? Keep them up. Now listen to what I said. Listen to me. Please listen to what I said. I said friends. I didn't say strangers. I didn't say people that you don't know did I landed. I said, how many of you have friends? You can put them down now. How many of you have friends that don't know Jesus? Do you understand the importance of this verse? So Jesus said to Legion, he said, I want you to go home. I want you to go to that place. I want you to go to your friends, the people that you know, Sammy, the people that you like to text. You know, I know you're trying to lift old Joey up. Text my brother Joey a good word for today. I tell you, I love getting a good word for today. Only thing I don't like about Sammy, and I'm going to say it in here in front of everybody. <laughs> if I text people stuff, I text them the whole verse. I'll write the verse down on my phone. Samuel just say Psalms 119.8. I got to go look it up. <laughs> if you would save me some time, Brother Samuel, I wouldn't have to go look it up. And I, you know, one, I know there's a hundred negative things you can come up with about Samuel. That's the only one I can come up with, okay? And he's, you know what, tomorrow morning he's going to text me Proverbs 8.2 or something. I know what he is, just to mess with me. But Jesus said, get your ministry in the right place. But secondly, listen to this, y'all. Get your message in the right place. Me and Sister Connie, it's my friend Sister Connie over here. I love Sister Connie. Every now and then somebody sees my twisted sense of humor, and, <laughs> and she does. We were in here one Wednesday night talking about prayer requests. What did I say, Connie? What did I say? <laughs> She knew the song. <laughs> it bothers us, doesn't it, Dee? <laughs> it 
Tell me something good. I'm going to be honest with you. Tell me something good. I'm going to be honest with you. If we have a ministry and we have the, the right people that we got to talk to, listen to me, y'all, we've got to get the message right, okay? I want you to know this, and y'all listen to what I'm saying. As Christians today, Sammy, we do. We've got the message wrong. We are complaining. We are mad. We are frustrated. I'm going to tell you something, folks. We're talking about politics. We're talking about COVID. We're talking about death. We're talking about all the things that are going wrong. And I want you to know, you want to know why the church isn't growing. You want to know why people don't want to be in the house of God. You want to know why people don't want to come to this place. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you would listen to your conversation during the day, think about what I'm saying. Think about what I'm saying. And some of you are putting it all out there on Facebook for everybody to see. That is not the message. It's not the message. Matt, we don't come down here on Wednesday nights to talk about we think what we think Biden's doing wrong or what Trump did right or wrong. We don't do that, do we? Why does that we don't do that? Because it's not the message, is it? We don't come down here to talk about the presidents and what they're doing right or wrong. We don't come down here to talk about God. You know what we come down here to talk about? Y'all want to know what we come down here to talk about? We come down here to talk about the Almighty. That's the message. That's the message. And I'm going to tell you something. Jesus gives us our ministry point. He tells us where to go. He tells us what to do. And better than that, he tells us what to say. Beverly's supposed to be helping me with a book. I told her, somebody, because I'm not right, she's going to help me write a book. I got like six of them going. He ain't got his permission. But I've wrote all these things that have happened in my life and different stories. for. But you know what they're all about? You know what they're about, Sam? I'm going to tell you what they're about. They're this. Listen to this. This is what every chapter has to do with. Every chapter of my book has to do with this one thought right here. And tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee. That's what my book's about. I'm talking about every time in my life that God did something great. I'm going to tell you something. And praise God that I could recognize what he had done in my life. Tell people about the great things. Marching, God ever done something for you great? Amen. Praise God in heaven above he has. Rick, has God ever done something for you great? Absolutely. Amen. Praise God he has. He has. Matthew, has God ever done something for you great? Amen. He surely has. Timmy, brother Timmy, has God done some great? Hey, I'm going to tell you all something. God's done some great things through me at work. God's given me an awesome job. God's done some great things through me at home and my family. I'm going to tell you all something, folks. I've been married 27 years. There's some moms and dads that sit up here at Children's Health Care Atlanta today with their kids that may be battling cancer. They may be at Scottish Rite. And I'm not telling you they're not Christian. That's not my point I'm trying to make. They may be up there today battling to see have one more day with their child. You know what? Praise God, I didn't have to fight that battle. God's done some good things for me. God's taken care of my kids. God's given them some wisdom. I've watched two of them go to school and get through college. I'm waiting on the third one. He's almost done. And I look at that and I say, God has blessed me. Tell them what great things that the Lord has done for you. You know, I think sometimes we all, we all want to say sometimes, well, Joey, I'll tell you this easy. I'm going to tell you something. If we just as Christians, just us, y'all, just this group of people in this room, if we, if we could just talk about the good things, it might change what's going on around us. If we just talked about, man, I tell you what, I got, God got me through this, and God got me through that, and I'm going to tell you something, God got me, my family this, and God got me that, and instead of moaning and groaning about what God hasn't done, God told Legion, listen, listen to me. If you want to point to the Almighty, if you want to get people trusting in the Almighty, if you want to get people believing in the Almighty, then go tell them what he's done for you. Amen. Tell them what he's done for you. Think about that, y'all. Tell, tell people what Jesus has done. Man, that's not even hard to do to go tell your friends. 
when they get to talking about it. You know, me and, me and Steve have some, some fun conversations along the way. And it ain't hard to talk about the good things that Jesus has done for us, is it? It's not hard, Lynn, when we sometimes together as a couple, when we're sitting there and we're looking at things, and, and all of a sudden we might get down about something, but we stop our day up for just a second and say, you know what? Man, God sure has been good to us. God sure has been good to us. And I'm going to tell you something, Deke. Sometimes God's been so good that there may be somebody else that needs some of that goodness in their life. And he has to send some nephews along the way and say, hey, you know what? They weren't getting that goodness somewhere else. And so, you know what? I'm going to let you lend them a hand for a second. That's just God working. That's all it is. And you know what? And then maybe they don't get to see that light because of something. You know what, Landon? Maybe somewhere along the way there's an aunt that says, I'm going to take care of my, my young nephew over here, Landon, and JJ. You know what I'm saying? So that they have a chance. You know what I'm saying? And then she tries to show you something good. Something good. And I think to myself about Landon, I think, you know, wouldn't it be cool? What would happen if old Landon, Sister Brenda, hadn't? But you know what? She's trying to show him something good. I'm going to tell you what I love about this church. I get my kids in here, my sons, my wife, and my family, and I look around these good people, this fellowship that we have. Man, y'all, we have something good. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. We've got something good. And Jesus said, you know what I want you to do? I don't want you to go explain the six reasons on how to do something. You know what? I don't need you to go, go give them the eight chronological orders of all that. I don't need you to go teach them the inner workings of the, the, all this, the deep stuff sometimes that we get flooded over here. He said, you know what? Just in your ministry and that people that you can talk to, just go tell them something good about me. Why is that so hard? But then he follows it up. Matthew asked me this question. Matthew, this is what we were on last night when we went to eat. He shows, he shows us our ministry. He gives us the message. But lastly, y'all, and this is why this verse is so important to me, is he follows it up with the reason. It's not so much that Jesus has done something for me, okay? But this is the reason why I do it. Why do you know a lot of times... People don't even know why they come in here. They don't know why they come to church. I, I think I was told to come to church. I was raised that way. Maybe I should be at Sunday school. Well, I want, I want y'all to understand that through all this negative stuff that went on, all this bad thing, I never stopped doing it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I didn't stop doing this. Y'all may not come to church. But we were still down here doing it. You understand? And you would say, well, why would you do that? Why couldn't you just take a break and sit at home in your locker and, 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 and do it on a, a web Skype or something, whatever? Because you know what? There's a reason, Sammy. And you know what that reason is? Because he had compassion on me. That's why I do this. I know why I'm here. I know why I preach. I know why I teach. I know, Matt, why I want other people to know Jesus Christ. I know why I want to tell them about the blood. I know why I want to show them the cross. I know why I want to get them to Jesus Christ. Because you know what? I know the compassion that he had on me. And if a lot of you in this room were honest, you would realize the compassion that he had on you. That's the reason. That's the reason why we do what we do. Why are we out here, Nicole, trying to help people that are hungry? Why are we trying to struggle for these people that don't even go to our church to give them food every month? Why are we trying to help these people? You me tell you why? The why is real simple, Lawrence. The why is real simple. It's not complicated because the Almighty in heaven above, throughout his wisdom or whatever, he sent his son to die on a cross for me. And in doing so, he had compassion on this joker right here. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. We forget that. Oh, it's not important to be there. It's not important to teach. It's not important for you to go serve. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You may have the ministry right. You may even get the message right. But you better not forget the reason. You better not forget the reason. How many days, how many nights do you think Legion sat there? 
and thought about, man, I was wrangled in chains. I was beaten on the rocks. I was living like an animal. I was living like an animal. Whether y'all know that or not, that's just the, what sin does to every one of us. It does do that to every one of us. And Legion thought, and man, before Jesus came along, and before Jesus came along, I had nothing. But I'm going to tell you something, Deke, that awesome Jesus had compassion on me. Now, he didn't have to have compassion on me. He didn't have to show it. He didn't have to do it, but I'm going to tell you something he did. And when he showed compassion on me, my, you know what? That will tell you something. I may not get the ministry right. I may not get the message right, but I'm going to be honest with y'all. You better get the last part right. You better realize he had compassion on you. And if you can get that part right, you ready for this, Steve? You might be compassionate a little bit more to others. That's the truth of the matter. Christians need some compassion today. We need some compassion. We need to show some compassion. We need to show the same compassion that Jesus showed us. Go home and tell thy friends what great things the Lord has done for me and how he has had compassion on you. I'm going to tell you something, Sammy. It's a good idea. I like my verse for the year. <laughs> I like my verse for the year. But better than that, I like this Jesus who's given me a purpose, who's given me a reason. And I'm going to tell you what, he's given it to a lot more of you. In the month of February, I, I have a, I hopefully Lord has, I has a plan. And that's what the month of February is going to be. We're out, it's going to be about telling other people about Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about that this month. We're going to have some fun with that this month. Because you know what, y'all? Listen to this. You, everybody that's a born-again Christian. How many born-again Christians I got in here with me today? Raise your hand high. Hey, look, you know, I'll be honest with you. You can probably raise two hands. Hey, thank God in heaven above. That almost looks like people praising the Lord, Connie, in here. I don't know. It's a Baptist church. Y'all get messed up in here. Don't do that. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. He saved my soul. Stand up and praise God. He saved my soul. <laughs> this joker right here. <laughs> this joker right here. Amen. And y'all can stay standing. We'll close on this. Praise God. He saved my soul. He saved your soul. But I'm going to tell you something about every person in this room that knows Jesus Christ as their Savior. You had your hands up. Do you all know something? Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Somebody had to tell you. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Somebody had to tell you about Jesus. It's the same message that he gave to Legion. Go home. Tell your friends what great things he's done for you and how he's had compassion on you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, most kind and gracious Heavenly Father. Lord, we are so grateful, we are so thankful to be in your house today. Lord, God, I, 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 know, I don't know the hearts of the people that are here. I don't know, God, if there's one here that says, God, I've forgotten the compassion you have. I don't know what their heart is. But, Lord, I know that everybody in this room probably knows somebody that, that don't know you. And I'll be honest with you, God, they're, they're probably pretty close to them. Lord, I pray this morning to God we'd get this right. We'd understand the ministry in our lives. We'd understand the message in our lives. And, Lord, we'd understand the reason. God, I just pray that you'd be with this church today, dear God, Lord, that as, as we grow and as we move forward, we're out there telling a lost and dying world, about an awesome son in Jesus Christ. Lord, just be with us in this time, Lord. And if there's one here today that doesn't know you, Lord, I pray today would be their day of salvation. In Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. I want to take this time and thank you for watching and worshiping with us today. My name is Joey Dibman. I'm with Concord Missionary Baptist Church. If you are not a follower of Jesus Christ and have never asked him to come into your heart, I'd like to take a few moments to help you do just that. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, this is open to every one of us that requests because Romans 10, 13 goes on to say, even deeper, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today, if you would like to pray with me, let's bow our heads and pray to our Lord and Savior and ask him 
if you're seeking him to come into your heart today. Lord, I just want to take the opportunity that if there's someone out there today, and dear God, Lord, they're seeking you, dear God, Lord, and maybe they're at a place in their life where they can't see, but today through the Holy Spirit, which has pricked their heart through your word, not the words that I preach, but through the holy word of an awesome father. God, I pray today, dear God, Lord, that they would be enlightened. And God, I, I'd ask them today to pray with me and say, Lord, I want to be a believer. Dear God, Lord, I want to believe in the fact that I know that you walked on this earth. Lord, I want to know that you died for my sins. God, I want to believe in the fact that on the third day you resurrected from a tomb and you sit on the right hand of God. And today, Lord, I want to ask you to come into my heart. Lord, if there's one out there praying with us today, dear God, Lord, that's seeking you, Lord, I pray that they would say this prayer with me today, dear God, Lord, and invite Jesus Christ into their heart to forgive their sins. Lord, we thank you for your blessings upon us. God, we thank you for what you're doing for us. I just pray that you'd be with us through this moment in time. And dear God, Lord, and show us the things that you'd have us to see. In Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen. You know, if you've done that today, if you've taken the opportunity to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, you know, he died on a cross close to 2,000 years ago and he walked on the earth. The Bible teaches us that everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord and believes in their heart that he has risen from the grave shall be saved. So if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, now I want to invite you to, you know what, into your new relationship with your Father. And I want to, to maybe help you, maybe through watching the videos as you learn and you grow, but maybe try to find a, a church that's close to you, a church home where you can go with other believers and walk with them and learn to grow with them. I invite you today also that maybe if today you've asked Christ to come into your heart, that, that you know what, maybe you would let us know. And drop us a postcard to say, you know, hey, I listen to these videos on YouTube. I appreciate what you've done. But I would like for y'all to know that on this date, on so-and-so, that I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. We'd invite you, and, and if you look at the address that's on the screen today, and, and maybe send a postcard. And then, you know what, if you don't want to write it down, maybe through email. There will be a, an email address that you can address to our church at Concord Missionary Baptist Church. You could just email us and let us know what's going on in your life. But even better than that out there today, maybe you are a, a Christian today and maybe you're not here in Temple, Georgia with us, but you're in your walk with Jesus today and you're, you're having some valleys that you're having to go through. And, and maybe you need some, to seek some prayer requests and some other shelters to lean on. I invite you to also to email us or drop us a card. We meet on Wednesday nights to pray. We take these things before the Father. We take these things very seriously. and We come together as a group as we pray to our Father. So, I'd invite you to, to send those prayer requests to us, and I promise you that we'll take them and put them on the altar and bring them before the Lord. Once again, I want to thank so much for you taking your time to come spend with us and worship with us, you know, through song, through word, but more, more than anything else, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God bless you and your family.